the jungle is kill or be killed. And this is the reigning predator. The king of African wildlife is rarely a match for modern weapons or the relentless stampede of man-made machines. While they pose only a small threat to humans, there have been rare incidents of lions attacking people. But nothing compares to two rogue beasts that developed a savage taste for human flesh. They were the man-eaters of Sabo, and they went on a killing spree that has never been duplicated. What caused the lions to become man-eaters unlike anything Africa has ever seen? To find out, we travel to the heart of the dark continent. Savo, the very name means place of slaughter. The two lions that once prowled the plains of this tiny region of Kenya held its people in a reign of terror and halted the construction of a railroad. In 1898, under the leadership of John Patterson, Hundreds of Indian workers were brought to Kenya to build a railroad across the country. Shortly after construction started, workers began to disappear in the middle of the night. Soon it was discovered that two rogue lions were responsible. Lions usually have some bit of fear of man, but uh, these were just brazen. They would just go into these, these workers' tents at night and just drag them out uh, without a worry in the world. This unnatural lack of fear led many to believe the lions were evil spirits, called forth by native shaman to slay a monster they called the Iron Snake. The railroad would have been built many, many months earlier if it hadn't been for the lions. At one point, they absolutely paralyzed operations for, for three weeks when they were coming in and taking a man every night, absolutely. The workmen said, hey, forget it. You know, we're not going to work. They went out, you know, they built massive protections. Everybody's survival instinct was at play there. The African name for these killers was Shetani, which means devils of the night. And it was very easy for people to convert lions that nobody could kill, that at random could kill whomever they wanted, into some sort of mythical creature. Supernatural or not, the man-eaters of Savo seemed unstoppable. The Zabo workmen used to barricade themselves behind thorn bomas, these walls of uh, acacia thorn with two-inch thorns attached to every branch. The lions were so persistent in their attempts to attack the workmen, they'd force their way through these bomas and drag people out through the bomas themselves. Sometimes they would just pick them up in their jaws, jump over the thorn bush fence, and then proceed to eat the poor unfortunate right outside, which for his fellows back inside the bomas would listen to the crunching of the bones and think, is he going to come back? No, I'm safe tonight. But they would still have to listen to their comrade being devoured. They combined amazing strength with the unseen stealth of a ghost as they strolled into camp and killed at their leisure. It's, it's amazing to think that a lion could transport with no difficulty at all a 150 or 180 pound man. But uh, the, the fact of the matter is lions routinely drag zebras and buffalo uh, some distance. John Patterson took it upon himself to stop the possessed lions. Patterson stinted no effort and uh, staking himself out, spending all night sitting in a small tree over uh, the carcass of a donkey, trying to lure the, the lions, calling them to places, and each day his journal just cries of frustration that he's in a tree on this side of the river. Meanwhile, uh, he hears the next morning that there's been an attack on the other side and two more workmen have disappeared and so on. This went on day after day, month after month. The uncanny ability of these lions to avoid their hunter defied explanation. It was as if they could read Patterson's mind. It was events like this that led everyone associated with these lions to see them as something uh, far more than just lions, but really supernatural.
terrors of the night. Finally, after almost eight months, Patterson was in the right place at the right time and almost became the next victim. After he had found an area where he thought it was likely that the lion would come back, he decided to set up all night for the lion. And rather than a tree, he constructed a, a blind and a hide for himself made out of a, a camp bed litter up on the top of, of 10 foot poles. He thought that this would make him safe, but matters quickly took an unexpected turn. Suddenly, the hunter became the hunted. John Patterson wrote. And instead of making off or coming for the bait prepared for him, the lion began to stalk me. For about two hours, he horrified me by slowly creeping around and around my crazy structure, gradually edging his way nearer and nearer. If one of the flimsy poles should break, or if the lion could spring the 12 feet which separated me from the ground, the thought was an unpleasant one. John Patterson was able to shoot two rounds into the lion as it got dangerously close to him. It ran off into the brush. It wasn't until the next morning that the lion was found dead, 20 yards from where Patterson had shot him. The attack stopped and construction resumed on the railroad. After he was successful in shooting the first lion, for a while the second lion disappeared, then several weeks later came back, started again taking men night after night. One night while John Patterson stood watching a tree, the last rogue lion came to stalk his human prey. Patterson took two shots at the circling animal. The next evening, Patterson went out to find the wounded animal. Following the tracks, they spotted it. John Patterson wrote. I at once took careful aim and fired. Instantly, he sprang out and made a most determined charge down on us. I fired again and knocked him over. The second he was up once more and coming for me as fast as he could in his crippled condition. Running for his life, Patterson swung up on a branch as the enraged lion lunged at him. From the safety of his perch, Patterson got off another shot. The lion was hit again. It lay still on the ground. The reign of terror of the Savo lions was finally over, but not before the lions ate 135 men. The question still remains. What caused these lions to hunt human prey? Were they demons sent to stop the railroad as local legend suggests? Over 100 years later, scientists may have discovered a more practical answer, a simple sore tooth. And what this abscess means is that the Zavo lion would have had enormous pain with any sort of pressure on this tooth. So without the ability to clamp down and hold its prey, it simply would have been unable to kill a buffalo or zebra or any other large prey. And in consequence, this Zavo lion had no alternative but to pursue a prey that was slower and softer and much easier to kill than a buffalo. And the railroad workers who had few defenses against uh, these marauding lions were just camping in the wrong place at the wrong time. Or were the Savo lions genetic mutations with a taste for human flesh? These killers looked different than the other lions in Africa. They didn't possess the characteristic mane of the male, and they were unusually large, almost 10 feet long, and weighed close to 500 pounds. The Savo lions, they were almost a third larger than a normal lion. Talk about something with that kind of weight, that kind of holding, grabbing, and catching capacity. I mean, it, nobody would have a chance against them. And why were the lions so difficult to kill? They had so much trouble trapping and, and hunting, uh, where really lions aren't hard to hunt ordinarily. They, they seem to be much more intelligent and seem to know what they were doing. They had a plan. One thing is known for sure. Until finally stopped by an equally relentless hunter, these mysterious lions ruled the jungle and reigned supreme as the man-eaters of Tsavo.